What's up, y'all? KRC Pinto here. So Guilty Gear Strive got delayed until June. Big bummer. But in the meantime, we have Plus R to hold us over. In case you don't know, Guilty Gear XX Axon Core Plus R is an older Guilty Gear game that has been getting some pretty insane dev love recently. The Steam version implemented rollback last year, which kicks ass. And they recently dropped another patch which blew training mode wide open with some pretty incredible features. With people jumping on board the Plus R train, myself included, I thought it would be good to give a quick overview of the game's defensive options. There are actually quite a few maneuvers you can pull out on defense and Plus R, which is a nice balance to how incredibly offense heavy and aggro the game is. So let's go over them. If you get through this visual guide and want to read more, be sure to check out the Dust Loop Wiki. It is an incredible resource for new players. By the way, y'all, if you find this video helpful, be sure to throw it a like. And hey, if you want more Guilty Gear stuff, throw me a sub and let me know in the comments. Anyways, let's talk defense. You've seen blocking before, but this is to go even further beyond. Ballas defense is done by holding two of the P, K, S, or H buttons while blocking, besides S and H. That combo is special, don't try that one. You'll know you're doing it right because your character will be surrounded by a green aura. When you use Faultless Defense, your character won't take chip damage. You'll see increased pushback and increased block stun when you use Faultless Defense, and it costs a little bit of tension for every frame you hold it. The most common uses of Faultless Defense are to prevent chip from big attacks, use it in the air to protect against air unblockable moves, and to change your momentum. If you're running and you tap 1 in Faultless Defense, your character will stop, letting you safely fake out your opponent and start some mind games. Overall, Faultless Defense is a flexible and effective defensive mechanic. Instant blocking is exactly what it sounds like. As opposed to blocking before an attack connects, you block within 8 frames of the incoming attack making contact. It's a semi-tight window, but if you can pull it off, you'll be rewarded with reduced pushback, reduced block stun, and a little bit of meter gain. A successful instant block also improves your tension pulse, allowing you to build meter faster. This mechanic is a bit risky, but it can make a huge difference in a game. It's also super crucial for Robokai specifically, since his meter is so unique. Bursting is your get off me option. You can only burst when your burst gauge is full, and once you use it, you're unlikely to get burst again until the next round due to how slowly it recovers. A burst can serve two defensive functions. You can burst while you're in pressure and blocking in order to create space and remove yourself from a dangerous setup, or you can burst while being comboed to avoid taking high damage. These two defensive burst options will be displayed as a small blue, uh, uh burst. Because of the limit availability, it's important to use your burst wisely. Burst can be baited, so using it obviously can lead to huge punishes from experienced players. Your third burst option is to gold burst. Sounds fancy, right? Gold burst uses the same burst gauge as the blue ones, but the difference is that gold burst is used in neutral when your opponent isn't attacking you in any way. If you're able to make contact using a gold burst, like the actual burst bubble hits the opponent, you'll be rewarded with a 100% full tension gauge. These are used to press advantages or as a reversal on wake up. But remember that when you use your gold burst, you're sacrificing your best defensive option for an extended period, so be sure you follow up well if you decide to go this route. Slashback is your maxed out instant block. While blocking, Tap slash and heavy slash within two frames of getting hit and you'll be rewarded with way lower block stun, higher tension pulse, no chip damage, and your next slashback attempt will have a boosted six frame window, making it much easier to keep the momentum rolling. It's also worth noting that grounded slashbacks have to be paired with the appropriate high or low block for the incoming attack. So if your opponent's using an overhead, you have to block high and slash back. If they're using the low, you have to hold down back and slash back. The risk of this maneuver is that if you miss the window, you get hit. Your block will drop and you will have to deal with whatever your opponent decides to do. If you mess up, you're at their mercy. Dead angle attacks are a nice countering tool that throw out a single button to push your opponent away. 
They're done by pressing forward and two attack buttons while in block stun. So if you're holding four to block, you have to push six to dead angle. It'll cost you 50% tension, but it will also get you out of pressure and allow you to reset neutral. It's a good tool to fall back on when burst isn't an option or when you're not quite ready to let go of your burst in a round. You know it, you love it, teching throws is a classic. As with many other games, teching a throw is done by inputting a throw as your opponent throws you. Say that three times fast. Depending on how tight your timing is, you'll get one of two results. The looser timing version prevents the throw, but doesn't really do much else. The closer to frame perfect version, as if you were teching the throw right when they grabbed you, is identified by a big purple explosion, and it resets you both to neutral positions, allowing you to act more freely after you tech the throw. The second version is harder to pull off, obviously, but it's also a bit more rewarding. So be sure to practice in training mode so you can get the feel for which one happens when, what they look like, and what you can do afterward. All right, y'all, that's a simple overview of some defensive techniques you can implement in your game. Of course, Plus R is an old and beautifully complex game, so be sure to experiment with situations and interactions to get the most out of your options. Also, if you wanna learn more seriously, do not sleep on Dustloop. It is beautiful for learning this game. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and sub, and I'll catch you all next time.